<clears throat> All right, it's the day after the day after here on the Morning Pit on YouTube.com slash Panther.com, the Tuesday edition of the Morning Pit for this week. Like I say, the day after the day after. Yesterday was the day after, Sunday being the day when Pitt's 2022-2023 season came to an end, yesterday being the day after the season came to an end. And today being the day after, the day after <laughs> the season came to an end. I don't know how long we'll play that out and how many times we'll go the day after, the day after, the day after. But I figured that yesterday was a day to sort of reflect on mostly the Xavier game and the season as a whole, which I think we'll do piece by piece over the next few weeks and few months as we look back on that season. But today is the time to look forward uh, because the, the biggest question, and, and look, it was a question people asked even throughout the season, and certainly it was a question they asked on Sunday and yesterday is what happens next? You know, how, how does Jeff Capel, how do Jeff Capel and his coaches, uh, his assistant coaches, rebuild for next year to try and have another season like the one, ha the one they had here and maybe even one that's more successful? How do they put together a roster that can do what this season's roster did? And maybe the biggest question of all, can they do it? Can Jeff Cable build another roster like this? Can Jeff Cable build another roster like the one that went 24-12 and 12 and finished 5th in the ACC and advanced to the round of 32 in the NCAA tournament? Short answer, no, he can't. This is the Morning Pit here on YouTube.com slash PantheLair.com. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We always ask you to do that. Subscribe. Uh, and you can turn on notifications. You can get an alert sent to your phone whenever we go live or post a new video here at YouTube.com slash PantheLair.com. We post one of these morning pit videos every day of the week, Monday through Friday. And we post post-game press conferences and practice interviews and video from practice and all kinds of things. Uh, and then, of course, we go live also. We do our we a weekly live show every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. right here at YouTube.com slash PantheLair.com. We uh, uh, also will go live if some news happens or there's something important to talk about. We'll we'll get involved with that, and uh, you know who knows. You know we, we go live at, at different times, post videos at different times. You want to make sure you don't miss it. Click subscribe. That's the most important step, and then turn on your notifications so you can alert sent to your phone every time we go live. And of course, the website pantherlair.com, panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com. Go there to stay up with all the pit sports coverage, football, basketball, recruiting, and beyond. And of course, the message boards where they are buzzing all day, every day, talking about pit sports. You're looking for other pit fans to talk to, to talk about pit sports with? That's the place to do it. Panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com. And I said the short answer to that question is no. But the devil is in the details. Because the question, can Jeff Capel build another roster like this one? No. And the reason he can't is because for all the time we're going to spend this offseason talking about additions and what Jeff Capel brings in and what Pitt returns or, or what Pitt is bringing out of the transfer portal, for all that conversation, a key piece of the puzzle in building this past season's roster were the guys who came back. And specifically, Jamarius Burton and Nike Sabandi. Now, I mean, you know my thoughts on both of those guys probably by now. You've heard me say a million times that Burton was the MVP of this team. And Sabandi obviously is the ACC's sixth man of the year. He played a big role in this team's success as well. But because Pitt returned those guys, they were able to go get two guards out of the transfer portal and come into this season with four senior guards. And, and we talked so many times about how the pit coaches wanted to build a veteran backcourt. And, uh, you know, they had this and they had that. And they had the, the senior guards. Well, they were able to have four senior guards because they had two that were already coming back from last year. They're not going to have two senior guards returning from this year's roster when they come into the 23-24 season. And so even if they go get two veteran guards out of the transfer portal, which I think is going to be the goal, we'll talk about that in a second, even if they do that, it's two plus zero. Because they have no senior veteran guards coming back. Now, Dior Johnson's on the roster. The expectation is he's coming back. And I, I hate to sort of couch it like that. And that's probably how it's going to be um, for the foreseeable future that we talk about it in those terms. Partially because it's 2023. And in 2023, you talk about these things in those kinds of terms. You say, well, assuming that guy comes back, because you just don't know about anyone. Uh, and, and it's sort of, and I think even coaches sort of take the approach of, you assume you'll have X number of guys back, 
You don't assume you'll have all of them back, but you're not entirely sure which ones you're not going to return. Uh, so I assume Dior Johnson's coming back, but even if he does, and assuming he does, let, let's just talk about it. Let's let's just agree for the rest of this, uh, you know, 20 minutes or so that we hang out here. Let's just agree to talk as if Dior Johnson is is definitely returning, even with him back on the roster. He's a freshman, and even though he'll be a redshirt freshman next year, he's a freshman. He hasn't played in a single game. He only practiced for half a season. He's never been on the court. He's never been a part of it. He's a freshman for all intents and purposes. The only thing he's got is some extra time spent in the strength and conditioning room and and film room and sort of understanding the, how to break it down on a college level. But he's a freshman. Just like, I mean, not too far removed from the guys who are coming in as actual straight out of high school freshmen. And so they're not going to have four senior guards on this team again. And I think a lot of Pitt's success drew from the fact that they had those veterans. That doesn't mean the success can't be duplicated, but it's just going to have to be done in a different kind of way. And I think that's important to understand going in. I think it's important to understand that this offseason is very different from last offseason. Ultimately, they may end up bringing in close to the number they brought in last year. I mean, look, if they return everyone and everybody comes back, you're looking at seven guys total. You know, I mean, seven potential returners, which means you would have six open scholarship spots. Last year, they brought in eight new players total between freshmen and transfers. This year, you'd be bringing in, you know, you could bring in as many as six, which is not that much fewer than eight. Now, I guess you're not rebuilding half the roster. You're not bringing in more than half your roster. But again, that's that's the max right now. I mean, if, if one guy leaves then you're only returning six players. So now you're looking at potentially bringing in seven newcomers, which you know now it's almost the rebuild, but it doesn't feel like the same kind of rebuild or the same kind of completely new roster. I think partially because of, of who they have coming back, and we'll talk about that in a second. But you know, I think... I mean, they've already got three recruits, right? So, I mean, the, you know, the, the question going forward is... How many transfers do they bring in? Where do they bring in transfers? What what do they need out of the transfer portal? And whereas last year they went into it, I, you know, I think they had very specific needs of senior guards and shooters, which they got in Nellie Cummings and Greg Elliott and Blake Henson. You know, I think this year, I mean, some of the focus is the same, but it'll be interesting to see what the success they had this year, what impact that has on their efforts in the transfer portal this offseason. I think the priority has to be a shooter right off the bat. I, I mean, to me, I think that's got to be the number one priority. I mean, I think anybody who's a good veteran shooting guard, a, a Greg Elliott type uh, in terms of ability, I mean, I think that's the guy you have to go get. And if he's a little bit better defensively than Elliott, if he's got a little better handle or can create a little bit better than Elliott, great. But that's the kind of guy you need to go get. I, I really think, I mean, I could see them going for two guards in the portal, a shooter and a, a ball handler. <clears throat> with the sales pitch being, look, we've got these three guards coming in as freshmen, or two guards coming in as freshmen, really, in Joe and Lowe and Carlton Carrington, but but that's really it. There's no veteran returning guard. Now, they were able to get guys last year. They were able to get Cummings and Elliott, despite the fact that they had Burton and Sabandi returning. And obviously, those were unique situations. Cummings as a local guy who wanted to come home, wanted to play for Pitt, uh, his whole life, you know what I mean? So it was probably an easier sell. And then Elliot is sort of a, a three-point specialist, uh, which the team didn't really have. You know, you you should be able to find that three-point specialist um, in the same way. You, you should be able to find that guy to, to bring in and say, look, this is how we, you know, th this is what we can use. This is the role you can fit into. Uh, and then you should be able to get the point guard because, you know, Cummings, again, it was a unique situation because he wanted to play at home, but you had to convince him to play alongside Jamarius Burton, a guard who could potentially take point guard minutes. There's not that competition out there now. What's going to be interesting to watch with this team is, whereas this past year, you had Cummings, uh, Burton, Sabandi, Elliott, in, in this sort of four-guard rotation, they played together, they'd alternate for each other, and you know Burton and Cummings could both run the point. And so you had these four senior guards all sort of taking care of the backcourt, this next year is going to be interesting because you're going to have, you know, ideally you'll have a couple of those transfer guards who come in, but you're going to have freshmen. You know, I mean, freshmen are going to be playing a significant role in the backcourt next year for this team. And, 
you know, Jalen Lowe as as a point guard, Carlton Carrington as a a, a a combo guard, really is probably how he figures in there. You know, those guys are going to play with and rotate with some veterans that you bring in. It should be an appealing situation. It should be, I don't want to say an easy sell, but it should be a, a sell that you can make with, uh, you know, with a veteran guard when you can say, look, here's what we've got. All right. We've got these bigs who got a lot better. We've got this guy who's a four who people, some seem to want to put at the three, but either way he can shoot and create some matchup problems against fours. Uh, there he is on the screen right there and Blake Henson. We've got these really good young guards coming in. And what we need is a few veterans to play with them, to mentor them, to lead them, to to play the bulk of the minutes and help this team repeat the success that they had last year. Uh, this team was built around guard play last season. You know, talking about this this past year, this is the sales pitch from the coaches. Our team was you know built around guard play this past season. We need guards who can step in and do that again and help us get back to that level um, once again. I mean, that's got to be the sales pitch, and I, I have to feel like there's even less standing in the way for a veteran transfer guard this year than there was last year last year there was coming or uh the burton and sabandi this year it's 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 freshmen who aren't even on campus yet should be able to make that sales pitch and if they can and if they get the right guys and that probably shouldn't be uh over you know overlooked or understated the importance of getting the right guys guys who can buy into that team concept the way this this year's players did uh, then they could actually, I, I think they could really build something. And I, I really spent a lot of time thinking they were going to just rely on freshmen. But I mean, obviously they'll go out and get transfer guards. You know, I mean, that's the, an obvious move. And and really, they're going to have a minimum of three scholarship spots. And I think they need two transfer guards. And then beyond that, it's it's the best player you can find who wants to come here. And maybe it's a transfer. Maybe it's a late addition like, um, you know, like a Federico Federico. But you know, you potentially will have that extra scholarship spot to, I mean, at least one, if not more, to fill with, you know, whatever you can kind of find out there. Maybe you can find another four who can play that that is a legitimate four and maybe let you do different things with Blake Hinson. Maybe it's a, maybe it's another five, maybe it's another shooter. I, you know, whatever you can, maybe it's just a reserve guy, a bench guy who can give you some good minutes off the bench. You know, if you lose a player like Santos or like Nate Santos, I mean, um, there, there are options there. Uh, you do need help from veteran guards. I don't think there's any question about it, uh, but it feels like a different situation than last year. You're building the team a little bit differently, particularly with the freshmen that you have coming in. You know, I mean, this freshman class is, is really good. Uh, better, you know, I think than, than we probably looked at Pitt's freshman incoming fresh, freshman class a year ago at this time. Uh, I don't think we expected much out of the Diaz Graham twins or Federico Federico. I forget when Federico even came onto the radar. I don't think it was, uh, I, I probably could look back at the first time I, I really reached out to him about it. Um, where is it? Let me see. Uh, around April actually. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, mid April when Federico first started coming onto the radar. So, you know, even at, the, at, at this point it was, it was the, the twins, you know, and that was, that was pretty much it. So it, um, you know, I think we think, m you know, much, uh, much more highly of the guys who are coming in this year. And, and that's a good thing because they're going to need some freshmen to, to step up and contribute. But if, if you can get a veteran point guard and, and a shooter to go with these three freshmen, to go with the triplets, the Diaz Graham twins and Federico to go with Hinson. If you can get Will Jeffers back and he can provide some defense and and uh, you know maybe even get a little bit of offense, but even just as a defensive guy, which I think is is what his strength is, it's what he can really offer the most to this team. And then who knows, you know, however Dior Johnson can fit in best with the team and the team chemistry. I think as as a combo guard, you know, a guy who could run the point or maybe be off the ball. I, I mean, it looks like it should be another team that can really have some success. It really does. Um, now, it's it's a long ways away, and it depends on who they can get. Uh, and obviously, I think Jeff Capel and his staff definitely came away from this season 
with a clear idea of the types of people they need on their roster, not just the types of athletes or the types of players, but the types of people, the types of guys they need on the roster, the types of teammates. And I think they're going to go the extra mile as they go recruit transfers right now. Uh, over the next couple months, they're going to go the extra mile to make sure they're getting guys who fit in the way that this year's players fit in. Uh, and, and maybe it will end up being lightning in a bottle to, to find this group of guys. But they were able to put together nine of these guys. and Because ultimately, that's what they had. Nine scholarship players. Ten, I guess, if you count uh, Aiden Fish. Uh, but nine sort of recruited scholarship players by the end of the season. But those nine were all committed to it and all bought into it. And they were all um, working toward the common goal. You know, it's interesting to me, too, and, and, and I've talked about this at, at different points, you know, that they, they had this plan last offseason, you know, and, and they really set out to accomplish this plan and, and put together this team in a certain way, and, and, and they, they ultimately went out and did it. They built it pretty much the way they wanted to build it through the offseason. And it's still remarkable to me that even after building it the way they wanted to build it, um, they then had to sort of make a couple left turns. You know, the, the, I mean, they had a roster of 13. <laughs> they had a roster of 13 scholarship guys. And and they lost Cassius McNeely, who I mentioned earlier. And then they lost Dior Johnson. And then they lost John Hughley. Um, and so by the end of it, you, you know, and, and Will Jeffers. They had Will Jeffers was out as well. Um, and so by the end of it, they have the, just nine scholarship players left. And, and it's interesting because they built it. In, in a very certain way, in a very specific way, and then had kind of had to make this hard left turn to adjust for all these uh, departures that they had and these losses and personnel losses, and still they were able to manufacture it, a, a decent amount of success out of it, um, a, a significant amount of success out of it. It's it's pretty remarkable. So, I mean, even as we talk about the plan this offseason, what they're going to try and do this offseason, what we expect them to do this offseason – you never know which direction it's going to go and how it's going to turn because strange things happen sometimes, uh, as we certainly saw this season leading up to it. I think, I mean, coming back to it, though, as we look at what Pitt needs to do here and what's next, um, they have to understand they can't rebuild this year's team. Uh, this year's team is not going to happen again. Probably not ever. You're probably not going to ever be in a position where you have two senior guards returning, two prominent players, senior scholarship guards returning, and then you bring in two senior transfer guards to play with them. It's highly unlikely that that's ever going to be the case. Again, it's certainly not going to be the case next year because half of their guards, more than half of their guards are going to be freshmen. Um, so it's going to be a different team. and It's going to have a different look, uh, but not necessarily one that's destined to perform, you know, less, have less success than this year's team because I think the freshmen can really play. I think Jalen Lowe is really good. I think Bob Carrington is really good. Um, I think those guys can shoot too. I think Marlon Barnes as, as a three can shoot, maybe even a two. I think he can shoot pretty well. Uh, and so you've got that, <clears throat> which helps. As I talk about needing to get a shooter out of the transfer portal, it helps that these freshmen are pretty good shooters themselves. But I think you need to go find one of the best shooters you can grab out of the portal and then, you know, a pretty good veteran ball handling guard. Um, not that I don't believe these freshmen can do it, but if you can go get a vet, it's going to give you all that much more chances for success. So I, I think that's got to be the priority. And then, you know, I don't know what you do after that. Maybe you look for a more natural four, but if, if Jeffers can play and you can go Hinson and Jeffers out there, either in rotation or next to each other even, uh, because I think either one of those guys could be an interesting sort of matchup at the three, although it's maybe not where you want them full time. Uh, you know, I think you could really, I mean, I think you can go too deep at a lot of spots. Uh, and that's even, I mean, we're talking about Jefferson and Henson at the four. I mean, you've still got Jorge Diaz Graham who can, who can play the four and, and is, you know, Jeff Capel has said since the beginning of the year is more of a wing than a center. So interesting roster construction here. Just have to top it off with, you know, a couple veteran transfer guards. And then you'll see if there's anybody else you lose off the current roster. It's, it's There's bound to be someone. It, it would be a real testament to this team's uh, culture and roster construction if nobody leaves. Because that would fly in the face of basically everything that's happening in college basketball right now. Um, but you assume somebody's going to go. It's just a question of who. 
and how many. Um, and then you fill in those those holes as you need to. Now, if they go into the season with less than 13, uh, you know, that's not totally crazy either, although you'd like to have a full roster as often as you can. They tried. They tried this year, but it didn't quite work out. But So that's the plan going forward. We'll see how they execute it, and obviously we'll keep up to date on guys that they contact because it's contact season now. Transfer X has heard from school A, B, and C, even if it's just a direct message saying, hello, that counts as contact these days. But we'll keep an eye on who they contact and who they're in touch with, what kind of players they're bringing in, who they're talking to. We'll have all the coverage right there at pantherlair.com, panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com. The most comprehensive source of Pitt sports news on the internet, football, basketball, and recruiting. Find it all at pantherlair.com. And of course, our YouTube channel here, youtube.com slash pantherlair.com. Uh, like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We appreciate it. YouTube.com slash pantherlair.com. Turn on notifications. Get alerts when we go live, like what we do tomorrow night at 830 for our weekly live show. Thanks for checking it out this morning. We appreciate it. hope you had a good Monday yesterday. And hope your Tuesday is a good one as well. And we will talk to you tomorrow morning for the Morning Pit right here on YouTube.com slash Panthalaircom.